Chapter 1 Starting the Journey Mia was a young girl who lived in a small, quiet town. She loved reading books about different countries and watching travel shows on TV. She dreamed of seeing new places, meeting new people, and trying different foods. But there was one problem, Mia only knew her own language. One evening, Mia was sitting with her mother, watching a show about a big city in another country. People were speaking in a language she didn't understand. Mia turned to her mother and said, I wish I could understand them. I want to learn a new language. Her mother smiled and replied, Why don't you try learning English? It's a language that many people speak around the world. Mia thought about it. She felt a little scared because she had never studied another language before. But she also felt excited. She wanted to try something new and see if she could do it. Mia decided, yes, I will learn English. The next day, Mia went to the community center in her town. She asked the person at the front desk, do you have English classes here? The lady smiled and said, yes, we do. We have a beginner's class. You can join, and the first class is tomorrow. Mia was happy and nervous at the same time. She knew this was the start of her journey. That night, she could hardly sleep because she was thinking about learning English. She imagined herself talking to people in English, traveling to different countries, and making new friends. The next day, she told her best friend, Anna, about her plan. I'm going to learn English, Mia said proudly. Anna looked surprised but happy. That's amazing, Mia. I know you can do it, Anna said. Mia smiled, feeling a bit more confident. She knew it wouldn't be easy, but she was ready to try. Her dream of learning English had begun, and she couldn't wait to see where it would take her. Chapter 2 The First Class The day of Mia's first English class had arrived. She felt her heart beating quickly as she walked to the community center. She was excited but also nervous. What if I don't understand anything? She wondered. What if the other students are better than me? When Mia arrived, she saw a small classroom with a few other people sitting quietly. They looked as nervous as she felt, which made her feel a little better. She took a seat near the middle of the room and waited. A few minutes later, a tall man with a kind smile walked into the room. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. James, and I'll be your English teacher, he said slowly. Mia felt relieved that he spoke clearly and smiled a lot. Mr. James seemed friendly and calm, which made Mia feel less nervous. Mr. James looked around the room and asked, Is this anyone's first time learning English? Mia raised her hand, and so did a few other people. Mr. James smiled and said, That's okay. We are all here to learn together. Mia felt a little better knowing she wasn't alone. Then, Mr. James introduced a young woman sitting next to Mia. Everyone, this is Sarah, he said. Sarah has studied English a little before. Maybe she can help us if we need it. Sarah looked over at Mia and smiled warmly. Hi. Let's do our best together. She said. Mia smiled back, feeling happy to have someone friendly by her side. Mr. James started the class by teaching them simple words. Today, we'll start with hello, 
goodbye, and thank you, he said. He showed them how to say each word slowly and clearly. Mia tried to repeat after him, but she was shy and spoke quietly. She worried her voice might sound strange, but Mr. James said, Don't be afraid. We all start somewhere. They practiced saying hello to each other, and soon, Mia felt a little braver. She looked at Sarah and said, Hello. Sarah laughed and said, Hello, Mia. They both smiled, and Mia felt a bit more confident. As the class continued, Mia realized she was enjoying herself. She liked repeating the words and listening to Mr. James explain their meanings. She was still nervous, but she could feel herself learning. Even though she didn't know many words yet, she felt like she had taken her first step on a new path. When the class ended, Mr. James said, Good job, everyone. Remember, learning a language takes time. Just keep trying, and you'll improve. Mia left the classroom feeling proud of herself. She had survived her first English class. It was difficult, but she was happy she went. Walking home, she practiced saying the new words, hello, goodbye, and thank you. She smiled, knowing that this was just the beginning of her journey. Chapter 3 Learning the Basics After her first class, Mia was excited to learn more English. Each week, she went to the community center to study with Mr. James and her classmates. She practiced saying simple words, like hello and goodbye, until she felt confident. But soon, they started learning more difficult things, like grammar and pronunciation, and Mia realized that learning a language was harder than she thought. One day in class, Mr. James taught them how to say sentences like My name is Mia and I like to read. Mia felt happy that she could introduce herself in English. She thought, this is going well. But then, Mr. James started talking about grammar rules. He explained how to say, I am, you are, and he is, and Mia got confused. Why are there so many ways to say the same thing? Mia thought. It was hard to remember all the different forms. She looked over at Sarah, who was also trying to understand. Sarah whispered, Don't worry, Mia. It's confusing for me too. Mr. James noticed that many of the students looked confused. He smiled and said, It's okay if you don't understand everything right away. Just try to practice a little each day. Learning takes time. After class, Mia decided to practice at home. She sat in her room and tried to remember the sentences Mr. James had taught them. She looked in the mirror and said, My name is Mia. I am learning English. She felt silly talking to herself, but she kept going. I am happy. I am excited. She even tried, I am tired, and laughed because it was true. The next day, Mia practiced with Sarah before class. Let's say some sentences to each other, Sarah suggested. Mia agreed, and they took turns saying, My name is Mia and my name is Sarah. They practiced I am happy and I am tired. At first, they made mistakes and laughed, but soon they started to get better. Mia felt proud that she was improving, even if it was slow. During the following class, Mr. James taught them new words like family, home, and friend. He asked each student to make a simple sentence using the new words. When it was Mia's turn, she said, My family is big, which was true. 
She felt nervous speaking in front of the class, but Mr. James nodded and said, Good job, Mia. Her classmates clapped, and Mia felt a warm feeling of pride. Still, there were days when Mia felt frustrated. Sometimes she couldn't remember the words, or she forgot the grammar rules. One day, she almost wanted to give up. Why is English so hard? She thought. But then, she remembered her dream of visiting new countries and talking to new people. She thought about how proud she felt each time she learned a new word or could say a sentence without help. Mia decided, I won't give up. I just need to keep practicing. After a few weeks, Mia began to notice small changes. She could say simple sentences faster, and she could understand Mr. James a little better when he spoke. She even started using English words around the house, like hello and thank you, just to practice. Each day, Mia learned a little more. She knew she still had a long way to go but she felt stronger and more determined. She was learning the basics, one step at a time, and she was proud of her progress. Her English journey was just beginning, but she felt ready for whatever came next. Chapter 4 Making Mistakes Mia was starting to feel more comfortable with English. She practiced her sentences every day, spoke with Sarah before class, and even tried reading simple English words on signs in her town. But as the lessons got harder, Mia also started making more mistakes. One day, Mr. James taught them about verbs like eat, drink, and play. He explained how to put these verbs in sentences, and Mia thought she understood. But when he asked her to say a sentence using play, she got nervous. Mia looked around, saw her classmates watching, and said, I play soccer. The room got quiet, and Mr. James gently corrected her. Not plays, Mia. Just play, I play soccer. Mia's face turned red. She felt embarrassed and mumbled, sorry. She wanted to hide and for the rest of the class, she stayed quiet, afraid of making another mistake. After class, Sarah tried to cheer her up. Don't worry, Mia. We all make mistakes. But Mia still felt a little sad. A few days later, Mia tried again. She practiced with Sarah, and her confidence started to grow. She thought, Maybe my mistakes aren't so bad. I just need to keep going. In the next class, Mr. James asked everyone to describe their family. When it was Mia's turn, she said, My family have five people. Mr. James smiled kindly and said, Almost right, Mia. Remember, my family has five people. Mia felt her face turn red again. But this time, she didn't let it stop her. She nodded and said, My family has five people. Mr. James gave her an encouraging smile, and Mia felt a little better. But the hardest moment came one day when Mr. James asked Mia to read a short story aloud to the class. She took a deep breath and started reading, but soon stumbled over some words. She couldn't pronounce beautiful and laughter correctly, and the more she tried, the more nervous she felt. She looked down, feeling her cheeks getting warm, and she could hear a few students giggling. After class, Mia felt like giving up. I'm terrible at English, she thought. I make so many mistakes. Maybe this isn't for me. She felt frustrated and sad, thinking about how difficult it was to say even simple words. When she left the classroom, Mr. James stopped her in the hallway. 
Mia, he said gently, I can see you're working very hard, and I want you to know that mistakes are a good thing. They show your learning. Mia looked at him, surprised. But I make so many mistakes, she said, almost whispering. Mr. James smiled. Yes, and that's how everyone learns. Even I made mistakes when I learned a new language. The important thing is that you keep trying. One day, you'll see that all those little mistakes helped you improve. Mia thought about his words on her way home. Maybe her mistakes weren't so terrible after all. Maybe each mistake was a step forward, not backward. She decided that from now on, she would try to see mistakes as her learning steps. The next day, Mia came to class feeling a little braver. When Mr. James asked her to speak, she tried her best, even if she didn't always get the words right. And every time she made a mistake, she remembered that it was okay. She was learning. Little by little, Mia's English improved. She wasn't perfect, and she knew she'd make many more mistakes. But now, each mistake felt like a new chance to learn and grow. And Mia knew that as long as she kept trying, she could reach her dream. Chapter 5 Fun with English Mia had been studying English for a few months now, and even though it was difficult, she was starting to enjoy the journey. She still made mistakes, but she remembered what Mr. James had told her, that each mistake was a learning step. One day, Mr. James suggested something new to the class, find fun ways to practice English outside of class. This will help you learn faster. Mia thought about Mr. James's advice. She decided to try different ways to make English more fun. That evening, Mia searched online for songs in English. She found a song with a slow, simple melody and decided to give it a try. At first, she only understood a few words, but she liked the music. She listened to the song over and over, trying to sing along. Each time, she understood a little more. The next day, Mia told Sarah about her idea. I found an English song. It's hard to understand everything, but I like it, Mia said, excitedly. Let's listen together. Sarah replied. They sat in the park with Mia's phone, listening to the song. They sang the chorus together, laughing whenever they got the words wrong. Even though they made mistakes, they didn't feel embarrassed. Singing was a fun way to learn, and they didn't worry about getting every word right. After that, Mia started exploring more ways to make English part of her daily life. She began watching cartoons in English. She picked simple shows meant for kids, where the characters spoke slowly. At first, it was hard to follow, but the pictures helped her understand the story. She laughed at the funny characters and sometimes repeated words they said. Her favorite phrase became thank you very much. Which one of the characters said often? Mia's little brother, Leo, noticed her watching cartoons in English and sat beside her. What are they saying? He asked curiously. Mia smiled and explained, they're saying thank you when they feel happy. She said it in English for him, and he repeated after her, thank you. Soon, they were saying thank you to each other all the time, just for fun. Mia felt proud that she could teach her brother some English, even if it was only a few words. One day, Mr. James asked everyone in class to share how they had practiced English during the week. When it was Mia's turn, she told everyone about the songs and cartoons. 
It's fun to listen to songs and watch cartoons in English, she said. Even though I don't understand everything, I feel happy when I try. Mr. James smiled. That's wonderful. Mia. Music and shows are great ways to learn. They help you hear the rhythm of English and learn words naturally. Keep going. Mia felt proud to share her new way of learning. After class, Sarah asked Mia if they could sing the song together again. They walked home, singing in English, laughing when they forgot the words, and repeating the parts they knew. As the days passed, Mia noticed she was picking up more words from the songs and cartoons. She felt excited each time she recognized a word or phrase in a new song or show. Her vocabulary was growing, and learning English was no longer just about studying, now it was about having fun. One evening, as she was singing along to her favorite song, Mia realized that English didn't feel as scary as it used to. She was learning in a way that made her happy, and she didn't feel afraid of making mistakes. She had found a way to enjoy her journey, and she was excited to see how much more she could learn by having fun. Mia knew she still had a lot to learn, but now, learning felt like an adventure. She was ready for whatever came next and she couldn't wait to discover more songs, more cartoons, and maybe even more friends along the way who would join her on her English journey. Chapter 6. Small Victories Mia's English was getting better day by day. She had learned some new words from her songs, cartoons, and classes with Mr. James. She was even able to speak a few simple sentences without feeling too nervous. But Mia still wondered, am I really getting better? Can I really use English in real life? One Saturday, Mia decided to go to a small cafe in town to do some reading. She brought her English notebook with her to review vocabulary words while she enjoyed a cup of tea. When she arrived, she looked at the menu and noticed that it was also written in English. She felt a little rush of excitement but also a bit of fear. Should I try to order in English? She thought. Her heart started beating faster, but she decided to give it a try. Mia walked up to the counter. A young waiter was waiting there with a friendly smile. Mia took a deep breath and said slowly, I would like a cup of tea, please. The waiter smiled and replied in English, sure. One cup of tea coming right up. Anything else? Mia was surprised. She had done it. The waiter understood her, and she understood him too. She shook her head, no, just tea. Thank you. She smiled proudly and went to sit down. As she waited for her tea, she couldn't stop smiling. It was a small thing, but to Mia, it felt like a big victory. She had used English in real life. When her tea arrived, Mia opened her notebook and started reviewing her vocabulary words. She practiced silently, melding the words to herself, and felt more confident than ever. Every now and then, she looked up at the other customers, imagining herself speaking English even more fluently one day. As she was getting ready to leave, the waiter came by her table and said, Thank you for visiting. Have a nice day. Mia felt proud that she understood his words and replied, Thank you. You too. The words came out naturally, and she felt a thrill of pride as she walked out of the cafe. She had spoken English twice, and each time, she felt a little braver. 
The next day, Mia was eager to tell Sarah about her small victory. I ordered in English. She said excitedly when she saw her friend at school. Sarah's eyes widened. Wow, Mia. That's amazing. How did it feel? It was scary at first, Mia admitted, but then, it felt. Good. I didn't know I could do it until I tried. Encouraged by her success, Mia decided to keep challenging herself in small ways. At the grocery store, she practiced reading English labels on products. When she saw a new word, she would look it up in her notebook and write it down. She even started saying hello and thank you in English to people she knew. In the next English class, Mr. James asked everyone to share any experiences they'd had using English outside of class. When it was Mia's turn, she told everyone about her trip to the cafe. I ordered tea in English, she said proudly, and I understood the waiter's words too. Mr. James smiled warmly. That's fantastic, Mia. These small victories are important. They show you that you're learning, and each small step makes a big difference. The class clapped for her, and Mia felt her face turn pink with pride. For the first time, she truly felt like she was on her way to reaching her dream of speaking English confidently. She realized that every small victory, no matter how tiny, was a step toward her goal. On her way home, Mia thought about how far she had come. A few months ago, she had been too nervous to even speak a single word of English. Now, she could order a drink, greet people, and understand simple phrases. She knew she still had a lot to learn, but now she believed in herself a little more. That evening, Mia wrote in her notebook, Today. I learned that every small victory is important. I will keep trying, one step at a time. She smiled as she closed her notebook, feeling proud and excited for the journey ahead. Chapter 7 Writing a Letter One afternoon, Mr. James walked into the classroom with a big smile on his face. Today, we have a special assignment. He announced. The students looked at each other, curious. Mr. James continued, you are all going to write a letter in English. It's a letter to a pen pal, someone from another country who you can practice English with. Mia felt both excited and nervous. She had never written a letter in English before. Mr. James explained that a pen pal was a friend you write to but may never meet in person. Just write about yourself, your family, your hobbies, and your dreams, he said. It doesn't have to be perfect, just try your best. After class, Mia sat down at her desk at home with a blank piece of paper in front of her. She didn't know where to start. She looked around her room for inspiration and then remembered the things she loved, her family, her friends, reading, and, of course, learning English. Mia took a deep breath and began her letter. Dear Pen Pal Hello. My name is Mia. I am 14 years old and I am from a small town. I am learning English and I hope you can help me practice. I live with my family. I have a mother, a father, and a little brother named Leo. My brother is very funny, and he likes to copy English words that I say. He is always saying thank you and hello now, just like me. My favorite hobby is reading. I love books about other countries. I want to travel the world one day. 
I also like to listen to English songs and watch cartoons. They help me learn new words. Learning English is hard, but I enjoy it. I want to speak with people from different places and learn about their lives. My dream is to visit an English-speaking country someday. Please tell me about you. I want to know about your family, your hobbies, and your dreams. Thank you for reading my letter. I hope to hear from you soon. Your friend, Mia. When she finished, Mia read the letter over and smiled. She was proud that she had written so much in English. The sentences were simple, but they told her story, her dreams, and her love for learning. The next day in class, Mr. James collected all the letters. He read Mia's letter and gave her an encouraging nod. Great job, Mia. This letter shows who you are, and your English is getting better and better. I'm proud of you, he said. Mia felt her heart swell with pride. A few weeks later, Mr. James told the class that they had received replies from their pen pals. Mia's heart raced as he handed her a letter. The envelope had a stamp from another country, and her name was written on it in neat handwriting. She opened the letter carefully and began to read. Dear Mia, Hello. My name is Emma, and I am 15 years old. I live in a big city. I am also learning English, so maybe we can help each other. I live with my parents and my dog, Max. He is very silly, and he loves to play. My favorite hobby is painting. I like to paint pictures of nature, trees, flowers, and animals. I think it's amazing that you want to travel. I want to travel, too. I hope we both reach our dreams one day. I'm excited to learn English with you, and I look forward to being your friend. Your friend. Emma. Mia read Emma's letter over and over, smiling at every word. She had a friend in another country who was learning English too. She felt a sense of connection, as if she were already speaking English with people around the world. That night, Mia carefully placed both letters in her notebook, feeling proud of her progress. She had written a letter, made a friend, and shared her dreams, all in English. For the first time, Mia realized that her English skills were not just for the classroom. They were her bridge to a world full of new friends, new cultures, and new adventures. Mia knew her journey was far from over, but now, with a pen pal by her side, she felt more motivated than ever. Writing that letter had been a big step, and she was ready for many more. Chapter 8 A New Dream The weeks passed, and soon, Mia's beginner English course was coming to an end. She could hardly believe how much she had learned. She remembered her first class, feeling nervous and unsure, struggling to say even the simplest words. Now, she could write letters, talk with her classmates, and even order tea at a cafe. She had learned so much, and her heart was full of pride. On the last day of class, Mr. James asked everyone to gather around. Congratulations, everyone. He said with a big smile. You have all done an amazing job. You've learned so much, and I am so proud of each of you. The students clapped and cheered, celebrating their hard work and achievements. Mia looked around at her classmates and thought about all they had been through together. 
She remembered practicing English sentences with Sarah, making mistakes, and laughing together as they learned. She felt grateful for her new friend. Mr. James continued, learning English is a journey that never really ends. Today is only the beginning. Keep practicing, keep trying, and one day, you'll be able to use English in even bigger ways. Mia listened carefully to his words. She realized that she didn't want to stop learning English just because the class was ending. She thought about all the things she wanted to do, to travel, to meet new friends, and to discover other places and cultures. Learning English had opened her eyes to new possibilities, and she didn't want that journey to end. After class, Mia went to thank Mr. James. Thank you for everything, she said with a smile. You helped me believe that I can learn English. Mr. James smiled back. Mia, you did the hard work. You kept trying, even when it was difficult. I know you will keep learning, and I believe you'll reach your dreams. On her way home, Mia thought about what her dreams were. At the beginning, her goal was just to understand English and be able to speak a little. But now, she felt a new dream growing inside her. She wanted to travel to an English-speaking country, not just to visit, but to stay for a while and really experience life there. She wanted to meet people from around the world, share her story, and hear theirs too. That evening, Mia wrote down her new dream in her notebook, One day, I will live in an English-speaking country. I will use my English every day, make new friends, and learn about other cultures. I will keep learning and growing. As she closed her notebook, she felt a wave of excitement. This dream felt big, but she knew she could work toward it, one step at a time. Over the next few days, Mia kept practicing. She listened to new songs, watched English shows, and even tried reading a simple English book. She started planning how she could keep learning on her own. She knew it wouldn't always be easy, but she was ready for the challenge. She had come so far, and now, she was ready to go even further. One afternoon, she received another letter from Emma, her pen pal. Emma wrote about her own dreams, saying she hoped to study art in another country someday. Mia wrote back, telling Emma about her new dream of living in an English-speaking country. She told her about her journey so far and how it had changed her life. As Mia sealed the letter, she felt grateful. Learning English had not only given her new skills, but had also given her a new way to see the world. She was no longer just a girl from a small town, she was a girl with dreams, with friends from far away, and with a heart open to new adventures. Mia looked out her window, imagining all the places she would go one day. She knew she had a long road ahead, but she felt ready. Her journey had only begun, and she couldn't wait to see where it would take her. With her new dream in her heart, Mia smiled, feeling excited about the future. She knew that as long as she kept learning, practicing, and believing in herself, anything was possible. Her English journey would continue, and so would her dreams.